Oh my gosh, you're the bomber. I thought so. You thought I was the bomber? Nancy, I'm hurt. Why? You obviously are the bomber. But you only say that because you've caught me more or less red-handed. I could have sworn that up till now I was beyond suspicion. I thought it was you because... I thought it was you because I overheard you and Jasmine talking. Or should I say conspiring? And that magazine, sending you copies when you weren't a subscriber, didn't believe it. Who cares about the notes? She's probably the one who's been planting those bombs. So it was all Jasmine's idea? Well, maybe not entirely. I still get a kick out of fighting the power every once in a while. So, where do we go from here? There's nowhere to go. You're caught. It's over. Unfortunately, Nancy, that's not quite true. The bomb I just finished constructing is not only extremely powerful, but I'm afraid it's armed. And when it goes off, major explosion. The spa, its guests, the staff, all gone. So, it's either capture me and watch the Redondo, as well as yourself go bye-bye, or let me go and defuse the bomb. What will it be, Nancy? What will it be? <laughs> That's what I thought. True to form, Cassidy barely blinked an eye when I walked into the reception area after defusing his last bomb. He just sighed, stood up, and put his hands out so the police officer beside me could handcuff him. His last words to me, his only words to me, were, Well, Nancy, so much for fighting the power. So I still don't know if he knew that the Redondo Board of Directors had given him a big fat promotion. It would have been just like Nick not to tell him. Although between his infatuation with Jasmine and the pleasure he obviously took in sticking it to the establishment, I kind of think Cassidy would have chosen being a mad bomber over being guest services manager anyway. And, believe it or not, ever since the trial, the Redondo has been filled to capacity. I guess it's true what they say. Any publicity is good publicity, as long as they spell your name right. Speaking of which, even I got some publicity in the Tinseltown Tatler. They referred to me as the teenage sleuth who solved the bombings in between a few much needed procedures. I thought it was kind of funny, but my friend Bess Marvin says I should sue. But I can't do that. After all, they spelled my name right. Oh my gosh, it's you. I was right after all. I... What are you doing here? What I've been doing all along. I've been looking for the bomber. I've been looking for the bomber. See, I'm not really an assistant. I'm a detective. Oh my... You went to all this trouble just to get out of your contract here? You do not understand. All of my peers, they are fawned over for their sophomoric beauty products, while I slave away here creating truly revolutionary products in utter anonymity. It is criminal. Actually, what you've been doing here is criminal. It's also over. <laughs> that is what you think. <laughs> you see... I have just now built and activated a bomb that is powerful enough to destroy this entire spa and everyone inside it. And so, you have a choice. Capture me and perish, or defuse the bomb and live. <laughs> no, it is not much of a choice, is it? <laughs> Goodbye, Nancy. <laughs> Helfton was stunned when I showed up in his lab after defusing that final bomb of his, but only for a moment. Next thing I knew, he had released all the animals from their cages as a diversion and was making a mad dash for the door. But the iguana, also bent on escape, got there first. Helfton tripped over him, did two very impressive somersaults, and landed at the feet of the police officers who had arrived just in time to collar him. I still don't get why Helfgen kept planting bombs even after the Redondo offered him a new contract with better terms. Maybe he didn't trust the Redondo to make good on it. Maybe someone else had made him an even better offer. Maybe his heart was too set on having his own store, or maybe he just liked making bombs. Anyway, throughout his trial he kept insisting it was all just the big yoke. 
But ultimately, the jury disagreed. And, believe it or not, ever since the trial, the Redondo has been filled to capacity. I guess it's true what they say. Any publicity is good publicity, as long as they spell your name right. Speaking of which, even I got some publicity in the Tinseltown Tatler. They referred to me as the teenage sleuth who solved the bombings in between a few much-needed procedures. I thought it was kind of funny, but my friend Bess Marvin says I should sue. But I can't do that. After all, they spelled my name right. Oh my gosh, you're the bomber. I was right. Y no, Nancy, you, you got it all wrong. That janitor lady, she upset me so much, I just started walking. And then I came across that tunnel, and then just now, I discovered this place! That's the truth, I swear! I'm sorry, but I don't believe you for an instant. Ugh, oh, I don't blame you. I suck at improv. I suck at everything! My last play closed within a week, my last movie tanked, the TV pilot I made last year never aired. Yes, I'm the mad bomber. But don't you see, I had to do something that would get people talking about me again. I had to create a nice, juicy buzz. Wow, you're as publicity crazy as your... Crazy Sister Ida. Oh, I didn't know her mother was named Daisy. Hmm, I didn't know that. You're as publicity crazy as your sister Ida. But where did you ever learn how to make bombs? It was part of the research I did when I was up for the starring role in a movie about a terrorist who falls tragically in love with her target. It was a stupid movie. Thank heavens I didn't get the part. Anyway, look. How much is it going to take for you to keep quiet about this? Sorry, not interested. Are you sure? I could make it worth your while. No thanks. Big mistake, Nancy. Big mistake. See, right over there is a bomb. My latest and greatest. And I just armed it. I could disarm it, but because you're being such a goody-goody, I'm going to make you do it. Oh, and if you fail and the bomb goes off? You and the entire spa will be blown to smithereens! Have fun! The performance Jasmine gave when I went to her room after defusing that bomb was truly Oscar-worthy. Shock, disbelief, outrage, remorse. As soon as she saw the police officers I brought with me, she went through them all, tearfully trying to convince them she was merely an innocent victim whose only real crime had been attempting to live the impossibly difficult and ever so cruel life of the actor. But the cops would have none of it. Poor Jasmine griped about her declining acting skills all the way to their squad car. Hardly anyone else was griping, though. Within a week, her agent had sold the story of Jasmine's exploits as a female mad bomber to a Hollywood producer for six figures. She even threw in Jasmine's diary, which turned out to be a little unusual. Apparently, growing up with Ada, a self-admitted nosy little brat, had compelled Jasmine to keep a diary in which whatever she wrote was the total opposite of what really happened. So when the producer asked for help decoding it, Cassidy, still smarting from Jasmine's public rejection, eagerly signed on. Not only that, but the producer hired Joanna's brother Elwood to write the screenplay, and guess who he cast to play the Jasmine character? That's right, little sister Ida. Big sister Jasmine was fit to be tied. What's more, believe it or not, ever since the trial, the Redondo has been filled to capacity. I guess it's true what they say. Any publicity is good publicity, as long as they spell your name right. Speaking of which, even I got some publicity in the Tinseltown Tabler. They referred to me as the teenage sleuth who solved the bombings in between a few much-needed procedures. I thought it was kind of funny, but my friend Bess Marvin says I should sue. But I can't do that. After all, they spelled my name right. Oh my gosh, it's you. I was right after all. I... Well, well, aren't you the smarty boots? You planted all those notes and bombs just so you could... Let me see. Get back at Jasmine. You did all this just so you could get back at Jasmine for passing on your brother's script? But I wasn't going to kill her or anything. I just wanted to inflict a little... What does Elwood Shrink call it? Emotional trauma. In any case, I'm afraid the jig is up, Joanna. Not just yet, it isn't. Because the bomb over there, the one I just now activated, when it goes off, 
It's going to destroy the whole spa and everybody in it. So what are you going to do? Go after me or be a good goody two-shoes and abuse the bomb? Nice knowing you, Nancy. Joanna couldn't believe it when I showed up in the waste room after I defused her final bomb. Nor was she very happy when she tried to make a run for it and was promptly tackled by several police officers. Too bad her desire to get back at Jasmine was greater than her desire to get rich selling liposuction fat. Apparently there's a thriving black market for that stuff. Yuck. As for her beloved rats, with Helpton's help, they all found good homes. Joanna had taken such good care of them that one of them even became a star on the pet rat show circuit. Must have been its lustrous coat. Elwood Brown fared pretty well, too. His sister's exploits as a mad bomber provided him with a great plot for his next screenplay, which was quickly snapped up by a Hollywood producer. George Jackson is set to direct. Oh, and get this. Jasmine Ivy is vying for a part in it. How's that for irony? And, believe it or not, ever since the trial, the Redondo has been filled to capacity. I guess it's true what they say. Any publicity is good publicity, as long as they spell your name right. Speaking of which, even I got some publicity. In the Tinseltown Tabler, they referred to me as the teenage sleuth who solved the bombings in between a few much-needed procedures. I thought it was kind of funny, but my friend Bess Marvin says I should sue. But I can't do that. After all, they spelled my name right. Oh my gosh, you are the bomber. I was right after all. Me? The bomber? Don't be ridiculous. I was simply exploring and stumbled into this place only moments ago. <laughs> I'm no mad bomber. Why, it's all I can do to set my watch. I highly doubt that. I understand you made a fortune. She made a fortune selling digital components. I understand you made a fortune selling digital components, which indicates to me you're a lot more mechanically inclined than you let on. Nancy, 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 I'm rich. If I wanted something blown up, don't you think I'd hire some thugs instead of doing it myself? Like I said, you had the know-how, and this was personal. The Redondo hurt Mr. Mingles, a defenseless, trusting, adorable little dog. Getting revenge was one of those things that had to be done right, so you did it yourself. Once again, bravo for you. So what happens now? Now you come with me and turn yourself in. Oh, you silly, simple girl. I hardly think so. As it happens, I just built and activated an extremely powerful bomb. Which means if you attempt to haul me off to the Hooskow, you and everyone else within a five-mile radius will very shortly suffer a very unpleasant fate. Better get to work, Nancy. In the meantime, Mr. Mingles and I will be off. Farewell. The look on Mrs. Montague's face, on the parts that could actually move, that is, when I walked through the door, was one of complete and utter shock. Up until that moment, her plan to ruin the Redondo had gone flawlessly. I must admit, planting that bomb in the jungle room while she was in there was very smart. It made me think she couldn't possibly be the bomber. Although that does explain why it turned out to be a dud. She was so bent on revenge, she didn't even care about those shares in the Redondo she was offered. All because she thought they'd hurt poor Mr. Mingles. But as it turns out, his only real problem was Mrs. Montague herself. After her arrest, the dog was adopted by an elderly couple, and for the first time in his life, he was given plenty of exercise, fed regular dog food, and petted instead of massaged. Within a week, he was acting like a normal dog. He even lost that weird thing he had for hair. <laughs> but that could be because his new owners didn't really have any. And, believe it or not, ever since the trial, the Redondo has been filled to capacity. I guess it's true what they say. Any publicity is good publicity, as long as they spell your name right. Speaking of which, even I got some publicity. In the Tinseltown Tabler, they referred to me as the teenage sleuth who solved the bombings in between a few much-needed procedures. I thought it was kind of funny, but my friend Bess Marvin says I should sue. But I can't do that. After all, they spelled my name right. Oh my gosh, you are the bomber. I was right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you were right. I planted the bombs to divert attention away from me and to postpone the routine audit that's supposed to take place next month. 
What I don't get is why it was necessary for you to... Let me see. Embezzle money! I don't get why you embezzled money from the Redondo. I have an aunt who's very sick. On top of that, they're foreclosing on her home because all of her money went toward doctor bills and she can't pay the mortgage. I'm sorry, that's terrible. Oh, don't be such a drip. I embezzled the money because I like money and because it was there, okay? I mean, oh, well I suggest you stick to the sick aunt story when you turn yourself in. Turn myself in? I don't think so. See, I just activated a bomb that's powerful enough to destroy the entire spa and everyone in it. So I, for one, am going to get out of here. I recommend you do the same. Bye. Nick practically dropped the phone when I walked into his office after defusing that last bomb. He was so shocked he never even tried to run for the door. Of course, I had brought two police officers with me, and they were pretty big, but still... He tried to talk them out of arresting him by giving him the sick ant story, but they didn't believe him for a nanosecond. Guess I am kind of gullible, huh? At least I'm not the only one. Apparently the Redondo's board of directors knew Nick had been overcharging clients, but they had no idea he was keeping a large part of those ill-gotten gains for himself. When they found out he planted all those bombs to cover up his embezzling, they promptly fired him and laid all the blame for ripping off their clients squarely on him. Then they quietly resigned themselves to the fact that the reputation of the Redondo had been irreparably damaged, and they'd no doubt have to shut its doors. However, believe it or not, ever since the trial, the Redondo has been filled to capacity. I guess it's true what they say. Any publicity is good publicity, as long as they spell your name right. Speaking of which, even I got some publicity in the Tinseltown Tatler. They referred to me as the teenage sleuth who solved the bombings in between a few much-needed procedures. I thought it was kind of funny, but my friend Bess Marvin says I should sue. But I can't do that. After all, they spelled my name right. <laughs>